Hello, everyone. Dr. Vicki here speaking to you from the Seeds of Transformation Healing Center. It's time for tarot scopes. Again, we're going to be doing the tarot scopes for the sign of cancer. That's Cancer Sun, Cancer Moon, Cancer Rising for the month of October 2023. So let's get started. Okay, so we have some visual aids today. This is a new experiment uh, to keep me sort of on track uh, with these things. So cancer, of course, is a cardinal water sign. Uh, cardinal means that it initiates. It initiates the summer season in the northern hemisphere or the winter season in the summer uh, in, the, in the southern hemisphere. Sorry, southern hemisphere. Um, and it is a very a feeling emotional sign, right? It's it, The ruler of cancer is the moon. And this month we have eclipses. The eclipses can only happen at the what we call the nodes of the moon. The nodes of the moon are a um, sort of a, a super highway of evolution. And so when things happen at the nodes, we have big, big evolutions. And we have um, and I'm going to talk about the eclipses first, because cancer is a sign that's ruled by the moon. And so whenever the moon, the moon is very changeable, it's constantly changing. And so it's um it's cancer gets most activated when we're dealing with new moons in cancer right or full moons in cancer the new moon in cancer would happen when the sun's in cancer the full moon would happen uh, in cancer when the sun was in capricorn so those two times of the year and then there's the time of the eclipse because the nodes of the moon are being activated so let's talk a little bit about the nodes of uh, about the eclipses we have two uh the first one occurs on the 21st i believe um no hold on sorry i did know this it's the it's actually the 22nd degree 21 something of um of Libra, that's why I said 21, but it actually happens on the 14th. It is a solar eclipse. And um, this solar eclipse is uh, going across the United States. Um, so it is significant. And uh, there's gonna be another eclipse happening in um, April of next year. That's gonna actually create a cross and the eclipse next year also creates a cross with the eclipse that happened um, back in 20, uh, 2017. That's a separate video. We can definitely take a look at that at some point if you're interested. Um, but it is significant. It is a significant eclipse. It is a south node eclipse. It's the, that means that uh, the moon and the sun are at the south node of the of the. Um, the south node of the moon. And the south node of the moon is about releasing. So even though this is a new moon, and new moons are generally about beginnings, it occurs at on the side of the nodes where we're being asked to let go, release. It's also on the side of the nodes of the moon where we can access knowledge and uh, a certain amount of uh, talent that we that we may possess in that in that energy. And South node of the moon is in Libra, of course, and so this new moon is in Libra. It's also uh, extraordinarily powerful. Now, it, it for Cancer, it occurs, where is it? Right here. The new moon occurs in the fourth house. So uh, we have the new moon in the fourth house. So the south node of the moon is in the fourth house. The north node of the moon, our direction, our evolutionary direction forward in Aries would be in the 10th house of becoming an authority in your own life. But before you can become an authority in your own life, you need to evaluate how your relationships, Libra, have either held you back or supported you, okay? If there is a uh, held back, it's time to renegotiate. Now, Pluto is square the nodes of the moon and widely square this, um, pretty widely square this new moon. This new moon is at 22 degrees Libra, um, 22 degrees of Libra, and Pluto is at about, I think, 20, 29 degrees of Capricorn, but it's still putting pressure on the nodes of the moon all the same. Um, and so that, that potentiates things, right? But we also have on the side of the North Node, 
with this uh with this new moon solar eclipse we have um the planet eris which is the planet of uh i'm not taking this anymore rebellion okay uh and all that's happening in aries along with chiron so i'm not going to get too much into that but what i want to say to cancers here is that this really is about breaking out and breaking free from those things, those relationships to power or disempowerment that have held you back and not allowed you to be your authentic self. So, uh, and, and be your authentic self in the venue of really showing people who you are. Okay. So, so that's what I want to say about that eclipse. We also have a full moon eclipse um, and that's with the full moon in Taurus that's happening on, um, I shouldn't have put that down, I guess. The full moon is happening on the 28th of October. And so the moon will be in Taurus. And here we have full moon, lunar eclipse in Taurus. It's at six degrees of Taurus. Um, Jupiter at this point is at around 11 degrees. So it's close to Jupiter. So it's Jupiter is potentiating this uh, to a certain extent. Anything Jupiter touches makes it bigger. Full moons are very emotional, but the moon in Taurus is a very stable moon. And that's really uh, a blessing, I think, uh, with this with this full moon. As the full moon is in the 11th house of friends, there can be an illumination around friends, who your friends are, who they may not be. The axis that gets activated with this full moon, with the full moon here in the 11th house, then the sun has to be, those full moons, the moon is always opposite the sun. Sun's going to be in that fifth house of creative self-expression. This axis that we have uh, the uh, this particular. Uh, now, usually when we have a, a, a new moon and a full moon and their eclipses, they sort of run in the same house, right? We have this, the new moon in the fourth house. But because uh, the, the full moon is in Taurus, it's in a different sign. And it's really connected to when the nodes were in Taurus and Scorpio, which was the case until um, this past July when it moved into the next set of signs, which would have been the North Node in, in Aries and the South Node in, in uh, Libra. So this, in a way, this new moon, this, I mean, this full moon in Taurus is bringing in all that energy of when the nodes, nodes were in uh, Taurus and, and Scorpio. And for those of you who are wondering, like, what happened at that time? Well, uh, the war in U Ukraine happens under that. So um, there's a lot, there's a lot, there's just a lot, <laughs> a lot going on, as you can just turn on the television or turn on the, the, the computer or see what your phone is telling you. And you, we know that there's a lot going on. It's just that type, type, type that time and of course we're in eclipse season this is when we make these leaps these evolutionary leaps okay let's talk about everything else so the sun uh, starts in libra of course at the beginning of october that is your fourth house again we have this energy of the fourth house uh, we also have mercury there uh, for a time and Mars in Libra. Now Mars is only in Libra until the eighth. Is it eighth? No, the twelfth. And then Mars moves into Scorpio. That moves into your fifth house of creative self-expression. Mars doesn't like being in Libra, but loves being in Scorpio. So it's going to feel your ability to move forward is going to be much sort of easier in a way and much more emotionally intense as it moves through the house of creative self-expression and children. And children so something could come up with your children at that time while the sun is in the fourth house cancer when while the sun is in libra and in the fourth house cancer is the natural ruler of the fourth house this is a time when you could possibly beautify your home it's a venus ruled sign right libra is a venus ruled sign and so the cancer rising or the cancer energy does like to have a very sort of balanced uh, neat, um, peaceful home environment. Now, of course, Mars is Mars is in there for the beginning of the month, and Mars doesn't make generally anything sort of cool, calm, and collected. 
uh, although it is in Libra, so it, it couldn't move forward without like having to think about what it was going to do, which of course Mars doesn't like to do either. Um, so there's been this tension of uh, tension and 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 such at the same time as like holding back. So you're sort of in this, in, you've sort of been in this this place of um, um, just a lot of inner tension, but an ability to sort of move into a more peaceful place. So you had the capacity to do it, but it took a lot of effort. Okay. Uh, we have Mercury uh, just moving forward. It, it started moving forward at the, at the middle of September. By the end of September, it moved out of its shadow of retrograde. When it moves into um, October, it's out of retrograde, it's moving forward, and it's moving fast. Whereas last month, it spent all month in Virgo and sort of sat in your uh, in your third house which is not an uncomfortable place for Mercury because Mercury does like, Mercury is the natural ruler of the third house, but it was retrograde. So issues around neighbors, uh, siblings, misunderstandings were happening now as it starts to move through that third house moving forward. And it actually is only in uh, that third house in October, the first three days of October, and then moves into uh, Libra on the 4th. And then from the 4th to the 22nd, which is about what, 18 days, it's in Libra. And then it moves into Scorpio. So whereas last month it all sat in one sign, this month it moves through, um, not completely, but moves through three signs. So our mind is going to be working much quicker, fixing what's broken, making, um, figuring out what kind of relationships, what kind of contracts, right? And then Mercury goes into Scorpio and we dig really deep when that happens. And you like Mercury and Scorpio because you're a water sign. Okay. So there's a, there's a resonance with the water and the emotions. Um, and there's, a, and there can be a bit of drama once that happens, but that doesn't have, Mercury doesn't go into Scorpio until the 22nd. The next day, the sun goes into Scorpio. So Mercury makes the first step into Scorpio and then the sun follows and then the sun and 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 mercury are both in scorpio moving through that fifth house which is the leo house so it could be very dramatic and very emotional um and very creative all right so i talked about uh mercury i talked about oh, i didn't talk about venus <laughs> venus uh moving forward morning star now in leo all quaffed and ready to take on the world right well, she's in Leo until the 8th, I believe. Yes, October 8th. And then she moves into Virgo. So she's had quite the journey through moving into the underworld while she was in Leo, by, uh, coming to the heart of the sun, having to connect with her own divine spark, and then coming out of the gate ready to uh, make her move, ready to express herself. Once she moves into Virgo, it's not like she stops expressing herself, but it's less about what she's saying and more about what she's doing because Virgo uh, is about doing the work that's necessary. And so their adjustments will be made. Venus at this point is in your third house. And so you're, there's some changing of the mind, changing the way uh, that you look at things. There can also be um, some changes in relationship in things like your neighbor's uh, or your siblings, but it's in a more empowered and positive way. All right. Um, let's talk about the social planets. The two social planets are Jupiter and Saturn. It's sort of how we re, how we interact in society. Jupiter is in Taurus. It's been in Taurus since May. It'll be in Taurus till next May. It's actually retrograde, as is Saturn. So both social planets are retrograde. Retrogration just means that we're revisiting something. Um, it's actually going to move from 15 degrees of Taurus back to 11 degrees of Taurus by the end of the month. Uh, we're going over that area um, whenever they those whenever Taurus was in those degrees. Um, we're going over what we moved forward on before, and I will see if I can quickly let you know when that was. So we're sort of reviewing and and. Um, 
Jupiter is about what we believe. It's our philosophy of life. It's our morals and ethics. So let's see, 15 degrees of Jupiter. So we're looking at um, 11, 11 to 15. We're looking at March. So March 1st to March 17th of this, this year, um, we're sort of going over whatever we were doing at that time. We're going over it at this time uh, to make corrections, to come to a better understanding. Once Jupiter goes direct, uh, then we're going to move forward through that point and we can resolve some of the issues. But this is sort of fixing some of the problems that rose up through our expansion in those first, say, two weeks of of May, of March. Okay. Uh, and now we have Saturn as well. Saturn is in Pisces. Saturn moved into Pisces in March and uh, is actually going to go from one and a half degrees of Pisces back to about a half degree of Pisces. And uh, it actually does go back even further before it turns direct. I believe that's happening in November, um, but it never leaves Pisces. So Saturn's in Pisces. And for, for the Cancer, um, that would be your ninth house of your beliefs. And so you're reevaluating uh, truths in your life. You're reevaluating your perspective. Now, along with Saturn and Pisces is Neptune and Pisces. Neptune has been in there for a long time. Um, and so, you know, Neptune can be a tad delusional, but it can also be very idealistic. So there can be an idealization of your beliefs um, in this case, and that can come out in many ways, uh, depending on um, what you find, uh, what you think the truth is. Okay. Um, and Uranus is in Taurus, right? Uranus, the transpersonal planets, uh, both Neptune and Uranus are retrograde this month, uh, as is Pluto, but Pluto does uh, change direction on the 10th of October. We'll talk about that separately. Uranus in uh, Taurus has been moving through your 11th house of new goals, friends, um, humanitarian endeavors. There's a technology perspective in that 11th house as well. And so you might find that you've been spending more time on the internet. Maybe you have a channel, maybe you uh, are putting your stuff out there. Maybe you have new, you have a website now that you didn't have before, before uh, Uranus went into Taurus. So that's, that's working to wake things up for you. And then lastly, we'll talk about Pluto. Pluto and Capricorn. Uh, Pluto is going to be in Capricorn until um, January of next year when it moves back into Aquarius. Remember, it moved into Aquarius for about three months this year, and it was a really different energy, I have to say. And uh, it's going to move back into Aquarius, but it's not quite done with Capricorn. We're still going to have uh, it move back into Capricorn into the last degree for about three months from September of 2024 till just after the election of 2024. So I'm not really sure what that's going to be, but I think we have to move through most of 2024 before we have a clue as to what that might be about. Um, all right. So as it retrogrades, right, anytime these transpersonal planets retrograde, especially Pluto and especially Uranus, or change direction from retrograde to direct or direct to retrograde, usually there's something that happens. Now, this is happening in your house of relationship. So there can be a transformation or a big change at this, um, at the change of direction of Pluto. It does take a couple of days for Pluto to actually change direction. So it's pretty much just sitting at that 28th degree of Capricorn. If you happen to have something at that 28th degree of Capricorn, um, Pluto is doing its utmost to transform it, um, to get rid of what no longer serves and to move you in a new direction. And for cancer, that can be a, a, a new relationship, could be a marriage, um, it could be a divorce, it could be a, a business situation. It's also the house of open enemies. So you do need to be a little bit um, circumspect with that. All right, so that's what I wanna say. All right, let's, let's stop this. And uh, I'm gonna use, 
Uh, now it's time for the tarot reading for cancer. And I'm going to use the crow tarot. Oops, maybe if I can find a place to put. Oh, dear. that's what I was trying to avoid dropping some. That's exactly what I did. Isn't that funny how when you try to avoid something, you end up doing it? I think there's a lesson in that. We're not going to talk about that. That's a little too deep, even for the cancer right this moment. Okay, so let's see what what's up for cancer for the month of October. What's up for cancer? We'll see how if it reflects um, the astrology. All right, just a couple more shuffies. Oh, my little crab over there. Rabalicious. All right. Oh, dear. Oh, my. It flew across the room. I'll be right back. Unbelievable. I'm not surprised this 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 one flew across the room. And you'll see what I mean. All right. So we have the five of wands. A lot of chaos, right? A lot of, uh, not necessarily confusion, but a lot of people with a lot of ideas. Everybody's talking at once. Everybody wants their idea to be the one that, that makes it to the top. So there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of noise. But in that noise, actually, is quite a bit of creativity. But your environment as you start this month is just like, it's just like the noise is just like, right? Okay, so let's see the challenge. Okay, the challenge is the six of pentacles, which is about balancing, it's about balancing the scales, but it's about balancing the money, balancing the money, making sure that things um, that need to be paid are paid, uh, to be fair around issues of finances, um, and to really evaluate, like there could be people with all these great, I'd say you have some money and there's people with all these great ideas, invest in me, invest in me, do this, do that, do this. You have to make sure that, first of all, that your money is going to the right places, the places that are going to sustain you, sustain your family, uh, but also in a balance with being generous to others as well, but not overspending, not overdoing, but just balancing the books, so to speak. Let's see what's underneath it. Uh, we have the strength card. So this is this is you taking control. This is you taking control of your life and having, it's not easy. This is not easy. We see the, um, the uh, infinity sign here. As you sow, so shall you reap. And this being a six, which is also sort of that energy of balance. Um, you have to be very, very, um, very astute. The strength card is about overcoming your baser instincts and letting spirit uh, sort of take the reins in a way. And uh, when I mean spirit, I don't mean a God that's outside of you. I'm talking about your own imminence, your own... Uh, your own connection to to God, uh, to your the God within, right? And so, but balancing that uh, with balancing, um, you know, we're human. The word human comes from hummus, which is dirt, and mana, which is mind, right? And so we're all all humans are dirty minded, but it reminds us that we both have a. Uh, an earthly nature, hummus, and a divine nature, mana, right? So so it's a balance of those two things. But you're in good stead because you're starting the month sort of, well, that's what you need. That that's the, the, at the root of it is you have to balance both both sides of yourself. Um, in the past, we have the Eight of Wands, all kinds of new information flying in, flying in that you need, uh, uh, that have sort of been, and I think it's in part, it's connected to this card where we stand. So much information came in 
And now everybody's saying, but this piece of information is most important. And this piece of information is most important. And really what's important is you connecting with your own inner spirit. In, in the sky, we have the queen of swords. So um, peop, um, you have to follow the law with this. As you sow, so shall you reap the law. Um, the queen of swords is an energy that <clears throat> doesn't want to hear a sob story. <clears throat> the queen of swords knows what's right and knows what's wrong and is reminding you that you must do what's right. Or you could do what's wrong, but you'll, you'll pay. We have in the immediate future, the six of cups. Oh, no, no. Sorry, the nine of cups. I, I can do that. These Roman numerals. Anyway, the nine of cups. So you're getting your wish. There's a wish coming for you. This is a really lovely card. All the things that you have been working on or wanted to do or uh, are coming to a sense of fulfillment here. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a love. So there's, there's abundance, but it may not be necessarily um, money abundance, although that, that could be the, the case. It's more emotional contentment. There's this sense of emotional contentment. And I think, um, you know, that comes from being true to yourself. You know, the strength card is the Leo card, right? And Venus has been in Leo was retrograde, made it to the heart of the sun. I said that all in the in the astrology part. And now you're standing on that power and it's working out for you, Cancer. How it's seen from the other side, you're, you're kind of, from, from others, you're kind of seen as a little bit of a badass going by the rules, the king of, the king of swords. This is actually a reading also for the United States because the United States has a sun in Cancer. So it does look like things are actually for the United States, if we could add that in, that that things are finally be people are finally being held accountable. Okay. Um, domestic situation. We have the five of swords. Not everybody is so well intentioned. You need to be aware of abuses of power. If you if you smell it, if it feels like somebody's messing with you they probably are so you've got to keep your you know you're going to have mars and mercury and sun and scorpio in that in that fifth house so um that might be when this is more powerful uh, towards the end of october just keep your eyes open for people who are not well-intentioned. Hopes and fears, seven of pentacles. You're worried about money. Who isn't? Cancer is always worried about money, really, because they're security-minded. Um, they're not really spendthrifts either. They're very frugal, generally. But um, yeah, so uh, I wouldn't say it's a hope or a hope that you have enough. Maybe it's a hope that you have enough, that you can do it. And at the uh, the outcome, we have the devil interesting um card to have this is the capricorn card remember pluto's in capricorn it's turning around there is an enemy at the door there is an enemy at the door and it doesn't mean that the enemy is going to take over and it's going to be a terrible thing it's just that you need to be aware that um what do i want to say One of the things I'd say about this card is if it sounds too good to be true, it is. Just make sure you dot all your I's and cross all your T's this month. You really have to watch um, what your options are, what's going to serve you. And uh, again, if it sounds too good to be true, it's most likely going to serve the other person or whatever this is that's facing you. All right, let's see what's underneath this. We have a heartbreak, death, transformation, 
and the King of Wands, which I'm happy to see. Again, there's that lemniscus, right? The this, and there's the lion again. Um, this is be holding your strength despite the challenges and the transformations. Now, this could be happening this month, but this could also talk about in the past you've 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 moved through this and you've had the strength to hold spirit uh, above all and have dominion over your spirit, which is what the uh, the King of Wands is. So, um, interesting, like kind of um, great and a warning at the same time. All right, let's see. Um, I'm going to pull an oracle card. I've been using the animal oracle, sacred as spirit, spirit. And what did I do with it? I brought it over here. I'm going to find it. Oh, here we go. Spirit animal oracle by Colette Baron Reed. That's what I've been using this month for the oracle. So let's uh, pull one card and see what that says. See if that gives us any more information. Hmm. Interesting month, Cancer. Complex month. Complex. But it is eclipse season. As I said, Cancer is on eclipse season. Um, it's a it's always a potent time for the Cancer when the eclipses happen. Because it happens at the nodes of the moon, and Cancer is ruled by the moon. Because it's so vacillating um the moon is and cancers because of that uh, we sort of go with the tides a lot um, but when the eclipses come the door opens and the door closes and uh we can't be quite as vacillating we have to this is a time to make big decisions cancer capricorn you know the the, the devil card isn't just bad news it's also about um uh, understanding um where you may be uh where your light may be blocked or uh it can also mean humor and lightening things up and maybe not taking things too seriously which sounds like i'm saying the opposite of what i originally said but it's not really like you you you're serious about things but you can't be so serious that you forget to laugh at yourself. Electric eel spirit, bring your ideas to life. Okay. Oh, all right. I'm going to read it from the book. It's really a wonderful book, a wonderful information in here. So we'll just stay with what she says. Eel, electric, E-L-E. Oh, must be here. Oh, okay. I'll hold it up. Not something you want to like meet on the reef, right? Seemingly out of nowhere, the jolt of electric eel spirit appears to awaken you to a big idea that you are meant to explore. Epiphanies and aha moments are gifted to you right now. And so celebrate. Your life has the potential for profound transformation Ain't that the truth? Inspiration arises in you, electrifying you so that you can't wait to get started and bring your ideas to life. The revelations you experience now are meant to set excuse me. You want a new path so that so do not be afraid to act, explore, examine, and do not fear the changes that may come. For spirit wants to shower you with love success and abundance that you hope to experience. Now is a thrilling time of epiphanies, inspired ideas and innovation. This is a wondrous sign for you today. Well, that's nice because the cards were a little bit hard. All right, guys. Well, I hope you find this helpful. Uh, like and subscribe if you would. Every time you give me a thumbs up, I go further up in the rankings. Otherwise, you won't see me. So if you like me, give me the thumbs up. It's the, it's the best way to uh, keep me in the algorithm and keep me in your feed. <clears throat>
For those of you who would like a reading with me, I do combination astrology, Kabbalah, numerology readings. If you're wondering what they may look like, you can check out any of my in the news segments that I do on this channel, give you an idea of how I approach the chart and how I approach the numbers and how I connect with the Kabbalah. Um, anything else, anything else. If you'd like to support me in a more sort of proactive way, you can become a Patreon member. Patreon people get these things first. In fact, uh, usually a week or two before everybody else on YouTube. Uh, and the more people I can get uh, who, as patrons, the more uh, specific and better information I can put on on uh, Patreon for you, special stuff just for you. All right, anything else? Um, nope, I think that's it. So have a wonderful month, and I'll see you again next month for the Tower Spill through November. Have a have a um, have an interesting have an interesting time. Okay, guys, Namaste. Much love.